Hey there internet, this is Kevin Coons. Today I'm going to be talking with you about my favorite VR180 camera, the Insta360 Evo. So this camera came out about a month, month and a half ago. It retails for around 420 bucks, which is an incredible value considering it's also a 360 camera. So it has a lock button there, but to be honest, its real strength is VR180. So I only use it in this mode. I'm gonna compare it against all the other VR180 cameras that have come out in the past couple years. This is a pretty new format, but actually it's been around for a pretty long time. So if you think about it, VR180 is very similar to 3D. With VR180, it's full peripheral. So it's a step further than just the standard 3D movies. In addition, you're getting regular color, but having full peripheral means being able to see all around you and below you. So it's really important to have a camera that has good built-in stabilization because it's not something you can fix in post like 360 video. So the very first VR180 experiment I did was with the Kodak Pix Pro. Put two of them together and a friend of mine did this 3D printed part here. So there were a lot of issues with this one. You had to sync them together. The other thing, it was only 4K res. It was pretty good for an early example. The next camera I started to play around with was the Lenovo Mirage. This camera, uh, what's good about it is it was synced up does really good photos. Bad thing is the video is potato quality. What I like about it is the form factor, how compact it is. You can easily put it on a helmet, but ultimately the video wasn't that good, so I didn't end up using it too much. The QCam, QCam was cool because it's the first one that flips. So here you can see it's a 360 camera, and then it becomes a VR180 camera. What's amazing about it is it has perfect stabilization, but unfortunately the quality was just good and I was looking for great quality. Along comes the Views XR, great quality camera, almost comparable with the Zcam K1 Pro. The downsides of this camera is it doesn't have any stabilization, so you have to use it on a tripod or you have to use it with a gimbal. For a while, I was shooting with the Zcam K1 Pro, the most expensive VR180 camera I've shot with. This is the original, so you can see you can actually change different things on the lenses by moving them. This retails for around $3,000. It's an amazing camera, perfect for low light. You can do amazing streaming with it because it has an ethernet port. The downside is it's very heavy and you can't really put it on a person's face and have them run around and get POV. You have to try and place things uh, in areas where you can get close enough but someone can still see. Some downsides are it doesn't have stabilization so that's a factor for me. I like having built-in stabilization. It's amazing for low light and it's a really uh, great step forward. They made a second version, which is what I'm using to shoot this video right now. So that leads us to the Insta360 Evo. This camera is truly a work of art. The size and the form factor is perfect. It's amazingly, you can put it on helmets and rigs and still be able to see because it's so small. So it's something I'm very, very happy with in terms of professional use case and also for vlogging. I'm just amazed by it. I'm super proud and happy um, that they gave me one to test and play with. It's a work of art in my opinion. I, I think that you know it might not be the most beautiful design, but it's an efficient design for being able to do things that many people want to do in VR 180, which is POV. It's actually perfect for a lot of clients' projects that want a first-person point of view um, where you are in the eyes of a viewer. And so having that is important and having something smaller than the K1 Pro that can pull off good quality video is very important. So it was kind of like a mixture between the views here and the QCam here because it has the built-in stabilization like the QCam and pretty good quality like the views, although the views is still better for low light. So ultimately this is my favorite camera to shoot with unless it's a concert. But again, for the size, this is something that is just so much easier to bring and shoot with. It's also a lot more conspicuous if you're trying to shoot something documentary cinema verte. For example, I'm doing a project with a nonprofit called Invisible People. We're gonna be documenting homeless people in San Francisco and LA. And 
essentially we don't want to bring a huge camera with us that is going to draw attention. We want something smaller that can be more discreet in a place like uh, the tenderloin. So that's where I'm coming at it from. If you're going to film a protest, if you're a journalist, then this is probably a better camera for you. If you're doing things that involve low light, you really need the best quality than the Zcam K1 Pro. But again, it's really, really big cost. You can almost buy three or four of these for the cost of one of these. So I had one day after NAB and just went around Vegas and shot a bunch of stuff. And I really fell in love with this camera because of its small use case. I was able to put it in these areas and get it into spots where I could get really amazing shots. Because with VR180, it's very important to be close to your subject, similar to 360. But you almost want to be very, very close because otherwise you lose that 3D space. It drops off after a certain amount of uh, distance. So that's my takeaway. This is sort of a biased review because they gave me the camera. But ultimately, that's the conclusion I would have come to if I'd bought it myself. I bought other Insta360 products, so I'm not really humbled by them giving me this at all. It's only $420. Ultimately, I found it very, very valuable to have access to it and play with it. And I'm excited to be shooting more and more professional projects with this in the future. Comparing it against the views for low light, it didn't have the best low light, but it's not really a problem for me in VR 180 because I can always bring light behind the camera as well as sound. So those aren't really things that I look at. The sound is okay on it. is probably the best camera for the price and the quality and it does pretty good in terms of light exposure moving from bright light to low light in honor of the insta360 evo winning best vr 180 camera of 2019 so far you know 2019 there's still a lot more to come but anyway i figure why not give it a cash bath <laughs> If you're interested to purchase the Evo, I'm going to link to my Amazon shop in the description. It doesn't cost anything extra, but I get a little nickel or dime, so definitely click the link if you're interested to buy this camera. You can also see all the other components and parts that I recommend purchasing with it, so you make the best use of this camera and get the best shots, and you don't have your hand in the shot when you're looking down. It just looks perfect. So anyway, that's the end of the video. I hope I earned your subscription. Hit that notification button to stay up to date on the latest videos. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I'd love to answer any questions you have about this camera. It's really easy for stitching to in post-production. That's another side of it I didn't mention at all in this video. I hope you have an amazing day, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>